a little bit of indecision. Welcome on in today here to the Stock Trends channel. Thanks so much for watching. We are looking at the S&P 500, which sits below the 4325 level, above 4200, kind of in the middle of this, I don't want to say no man's land, but you can almost say no man's land, right? The big level we broke out to the upside, big pop right here, bounced off, hit a higher low, pushed up towards 4600, and then have been pulling back ever since. But there's a lot going on under the surface here beyond just the S&P 500. And that's what we're going to talk about here in today's video because there's a lot more to the story than down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and then trending down, generally speaking. Okay, so we are looking at a chart here on TradingView. There'll be links to TradingView down below to save you some money if you want to check it out with the paid version or to use the free versions that we've got access to. Those links down below. Also, you can get links to Lux Algo to get some of their premium indicators, which have pointed towards a bearish move to the downside as of late. And as we speak, there really isn't a reason to start thinking that we are headed back up just yet. Although, although... At a minimum, we did have a decent reversal day here on Thursday. Check out how the S&P worked. We pushed down, pushed up, kind of in this, uh, dare we say, trying around the corner, trying to build some higher lows. Sure. At the same time, could be even saying that we are setting up in some sort of bear flag for the next leg of the move to the downside. That said, what about sentiment? Uh, we're going to stay focused here on daily and weekly charts because I don't want to, uh, you know, freak you out too, too much with some of that movement. But sentiment this week, somewhat as expected, came in with 30% bullish, 28% neutral, and around 41 to 42% bearish. We see bearish sentiment actually increase. Bullish sentiment also increased. We have people, less people on the fence. However, now you could say that it's two weeks in a row of 40 plus percent bearish sentiment and uh, two weeks in a row of around, or almost three weeks in a row of, of 30 or less, almost uh, bullish sentiment, which is not good. And it is decently, actually now we've got about a month where we are now below the historical average of 37.5% bullish. Okay, not to mention we also have a fear and greed index at 24, which takes into account seven indicators that's stock strength momentum a lot but that currently sits at 24 inside of this i do want to pull up the put call ratio five day average by the way which has been trending up ever since mid-july when it got very very low compared to what we've seen the past couple of months uh, or the past year or so down around 0.67 it's bounced back up now it is holding up over one the entire or so far in october but it got up there in late September. Okay, with that said, let's talk some more charts. Not just the S&P that's important here. Let's talk about the NASDAQ and even the Dow. Is there something to be said? Relative strength, weakness. The NASDAQ, actually, we do see relative strength here. Same thing, though, right? You kind of have you know a general, you know, gist of the move down, right? You got some lower lows and lower highs, right? But we do see, as of late trying to establish some higher lows okay as late here on the nasdaq something to keep in mind and over here on the dow eh, it's kind of looking similar to the s p and to be honest the dow you go back to guys i don't want to do this to you but i mean you know really go back about a year go back about a year and the Dow is <laughs> it's pretty much in the same spot uh you know not necessarily not that far but okay we're in 33 one so 33,100 on the dow you got to go back to around early November. So about 11 months, 11 months ago, the Dow was right around this exact same level. Coming off the October lows, actually snapping massively up off those October lows to pretty much where we're at right now. Tells you that, you know, a lot could happen in a month. A lot could happen in a month. But that was the look on the Dow last year. So the Dow has uh, not really been too exciting here, although it's, you know, got some higher highs, trying to do some higher highs, trying to do some higher lows. Big picture, big picture, but that's the deal. Now, where things get more interesting is beyond just the Dow. And so as we start looking deeper under the surface, we look at the five-day average, the book call ratio. Here is the 10-year yield we got. We finally got rid of our channel to the upside as it's been kind of a bullish, just 
I want to say a ball, just kind of more of a parabolic move. We're breaking out. We're extending. It's not really holding. You know, we're, we're kind of breaking to the upside here pretty aggressively. And uh, maybe that's ending. Maybe it's not. But either way, got a little bit of, upper, of an upper wick here on the 10-year as this week comes to a close tomorrow. So we'll see how that finishes off by the weekend. Currently sits around 4.712. And uh, we did get up to as high as 4.88 or so. Uh, and that actually came early in the pre-market hours on Wednesday, October 4th. So you look around and you say to yourself, well, how can the market go up if the 10-year is this high? And, you know, it would be a fair argument to be said. Now, we talk about the 10-year a lot, and I do want to bring this picture into your reality. This picture, or this look that we are looking at right now on the 10-year, is a picture that you may have seen before to some different degrees. And uh, people may be trying to build narratives behind this uh and here's what i would what i would say to this right and what i say is narratives uh you know okay we've broken the downtrend we are in a new era of rates right rates for decades okay because back to the left here we are talking about 1980 or so around that circle so decades okay take us back decades uh it's pretty clear we had a downtrend and it's pretty clear we've broken that downtrend here as of late in 2022, and now we're holding above that level here in 2023, okay? Now, the, this is a weekly chart. You can even go to a monthly chart to get a better view of this. And what I would, uh, you know, at least bring to your attention is that when looking at a monthly chart, <clears throat> understand that these are monthly candlesticks. Like each of these candlesticks now is, is one month. Despite the fact that we have broken the downtrend and I've been trending up. We have made a pretty aggressive move, right? From essentially zero, okay, to now nearly 5%. That's an aggressive move. Go back throughout history. We have not seen a move of this magnitude ever, or at least going back to 1980, okay? So given that information, given this data, one has probably been seeing the fact that, oh, rates are going higher and higher and higher, and they'll be staying higher and higher and higher, and that's the trend we are on, and they're never coming down, and we're only going up from here. Here's the reality when you start seeing that stuff, and it seems like everyone gets right on that train, right on that train, as we are in the midst of a parabolic move or, you know, a pretty aggressive move up. Okay, we are extending, right? No one, no one sees an end in sight, not really sure how to gauge this. Oh, my gosh. It is perfectly, perfectly reasonable. Like, and, and we're talking reasonable. We're not talking like what's going to happen because no one knows. And if someone says that they do know, I'm sorry, but why, why you listen to them? Because no one does. But at the end of the day, right, it's perfectly reasonable to, ex to potentially, you know, think of a scenario where the 10-year has broken this trend line. Maybe it goes to five. Maybe it goes to six. I don't know where it goes. Maybe it keeps going. Maybe we're, we, Maybe the top is in for all we know. 4.88 is it, maybe, potentially in the next couple of years. Back test our trend line. Dare we say even go below 3%, okay? That would be down here around 2.5, which would be nuts, right? Because no one believes that the 10 years can get cut in half from where it's at right now. No, it's not possible. It's not possible. We're going up, right? Perfectly possible into the mid 2020s to see that and then trend higher from there and yes we may very well be in a new era of rates and we may very well be going up but it's perfectly possible that we can see a period of a rates come back and it's actually likely at some point that we have some sort of reversion to a mean now there's no guarantees but based off of how the 10-year has essentially moved over the past i don't know 45 years almost, yeah, about 45 years on this chart. 45 years, not 45 days, not 45 minutes, not 45 hours. 45 years carries a little more weight there. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be so far out out there to think that that's possible, right? So just like we talk, we try to bring things back to earth, talking sentiment and why we talk sentiment. Uh, it seems like this is a spot that, you know, starting to see a lot more bullish talk, a lot more we're never coming down higher for longer. Rates are going up, 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 up. Next decade is going to be terrible. Yada, yada, yada. Right. 
It certainly could, right? The next decade could. But again, this, that's that we're talking decades inside of a decade. You know, there's many weeks and months where things could actually reverse. Oh, could you believe that, right? So it's just interesting to talk about this in uh, with the current context of what's going on. Speaking of current context, uh, I that does you know get me very interested in bringing up oil as a perfect example. Why? Because if you were to go back one week ago today, one week ago from the, the making of this video, oil was actually breaking over 93.50, just shy of $95. WTI crude, just shy of $95. Now, something we hadn't seen, you'd have to go back to August of 2022. Haven't seen that in a while, okay? And oil's going to 100 plus. Oil's going to 125. Oil to 150. I don't see a reason why oil is coming down. There's this is going up. Inflation's never coming down. Oil, we have got this massive pressure with oil and gas and this and that. And that was the narrative. That was what was being told. That was what the media or to, to, I don't want to say the media was pushing, but it was what, what a lot of people were able to get behind because a narrative and reasoning could be built around that as price continues to push higher. What has happened since? You're now seeing headlines of concerns about demand, this and that. And oil, in a matter of one week, one week has gone from nearly $95 all the way down to 82, sub, sub 83, it's 82.30-ish, give or take when you're watching this video, it could be bouncing around a little bit, but down 13.25% from its peak in literally one week, in one week. Pretty incredible. But again, it's the same exact thing that that type of move would absolutely not surprise us on the 10-year at some point, right? It could still be trending up. And guess what? This move is not the end for oil. This move doesn't mean oil is going to zero. No, oil could totally bounce around here and maybe trend back up for all we know. But again, when, it's, when we start seeing a lot of arguments, narratives, media, the crowd starts to push towards one side of something, we have to make sure we can check ourselves. If we're investing, pretty important, I would say, to some degree. If we're trading, also pretty important to some degree. Now, there's momentum trading. There's also momentum investing, if you will, if you really wanted to get kind of dialed into that. But then there's also the dollar cost average approach. And just like anybody would say, if you're looking at dollar cost average, why wouldn't you want dollar cost average when things are lower and then just hold that for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years to come and continue to slowly add to that position, right? So it's the same It's the same thing. People start getting excited about the stock market. And guess what? The stock market starts to pull back. It's kind of how the game works. And so this video, I think, was is, is a good way to depict not only what's currently happening, not necessarily in the S&P or in the stock market, but kind of in other, other areas. Uh, and to understand, like, this is a big piece to price action and to movements. And so if we can stay on top of this, understand that, have a little bit of a pulse, okay? This could be helpful. Not to mention, then you throw in a little bit of technical analysis in there and it can get pretty fun. Um, so beyond that, a couple of the other things. I do want to mention silver's charts. Got a bunch of lines here. Silver, one of my favorite trades of all time this year. I, I did partake a little bit uh, in this, I said a little, I just, took, I just, I partook in this trade to the downside and it was an absolutely incredible move on Monday. I got in on Friday, I held that overnight over into Monday and I'm actually mostly out, but I do want to mention that as of right now, silver is trying to consolidate. It's showing some indecision right here. Wouldn't surprise we bounce back, but it's showing some indecision and this dollar and, and whatnot is probably, you know, a pretty big component of this. But it looks like silver has now made three attempts to break below 2065 or so, uh, or 2067, give or take, and has bounced, uh, but also has not been able to get back over 2140 or so, which I have an alert there in case it does. And so it's kind of the last little piece to the puzzle here. Does, does silver essentially have a little bear flag in the cards for continuation? And do we target down towards 20 bucks or are we going to get a bounce back and is silver going to come back up and maybe test that breakdown point up around 22, 22.10, give or take? That's the current question on silver as we speak. Pretty aggressive move, right? So it wouldn't surprise either way. 
uh, depends upon, you know, probably the dollar. Now, the dollar doesn't have to necessarily move this massively, but if the dollar does make a decent move, you, one would think that would help the argument in either direction for silver. The dollar, again, same thing. You know, the dollar is super strong. Maybe you've been seeing and hearing a lot of that. Now, hey, dollar looks to me a lot like oil, right? Where it's kind of just grinding itself on up. Pretty strong, pretty strong, pretty strong. Here it comes, breaking some resistance. It could totally go for a pullback. It wouldn't surprise, right? At some point, it's going to pull back. If you look at the dollar's price action over time, it's actually pretty incredible that it's it's spent this amount of time in such a tight trend to the upside without any substantial consolidations, even pullbacks along the way. You know, no, it, the price action of the dollar has looked has at least looked a little more. I don't want to say choppy right over the past, even though it had a strong trend, but there was some choppiness to that trend. It's been pretty tight to the upside, pretty strong. So watching that very closely as well, this breaking down below 105.90 or so would probably push silver back up, gold back up, but we're watching that one kind of closely. Okay. Now I do want to mention last inside of this point, I'll pull up gold and then we'll pull up Bitcoin because well, why not? Gold is leading the way to the downside. Gold is pretty darn close to around 1800, which would be that spot. That was the last major bounce point on gold. We're watching that one closely. It seems like this is uh, weaker than silver, relatively speaking, although, right, silver moves a lot more, so it's tough to kind of gauge that, uh, generally speaking. But that's our look on gold. Bigger picture, go back the past couple of years, gold's kind of right in the middle. If it bounces here, great. Could be more bullish. If it can't bounce here, maybe you get some better deals down in through here, 1700 maybe even less. Uh, but that's like the big picture look there on, on gold. Now, Bitcoin. For those who want to talk about Bitcoin, been seeing, I actually haven't been seeing a lot of stuff about Bitcoin, I'll be honest. If you haven't been seeing a lot of stuff about Bitcoin, because I think that a lot of the hype is gone. There's there's not much hype here. And hey, fair enough, for a good reason. Then the same, the same thing goes here, right? For those who are longer-term Bitcoin investors who believe in it, who really think this is going to be a big play, long, long term, these are the times that, you know, it could totally go lower, but these are the times that when no one's talking about it, when it's nice and quiet, that you want to be getting interested. And when everyone's talking about it, when it's going crazy, if it has its next bull run, that's a time that realistically, right, through the nature of Bitcoin, it's not a terrible idea to be locking something in, realizing some gains, because if you don't realize gains, a lot of people have maybe bought in on Bitcoin somewhere up here, never realized any of the gains and have held the entire way and they're now underwater, right? Now there's a lot of other coins associated or in the crypto space that have done this uh, times 10 and are much, much lower. Bitcoin holding a lot, holding value a lot better, I would believe, compared to many other coins out there, but the same concept goes. So I think uh, the, the moral of the story here for this week's or for this video is sentiment, right? It's sentiment, 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 and how actually important that can be uh, to use as a tool, not the end all be all, but to use as a tool. So given all that stuff, it wouldn't surprise if we pulled back up on the S&P, if we got a balance here, but at the same time, the S&P is not insanely oversold and sentiment is not insane, insanely, insanely bearish. It's bearish, don't get us wrong, but it's not insane, insane, insane. A little more f further to the downside and that could change. But, you know, would not surprise to see some sort of retest and a bounce. But around 43.25, give or take, if we can regain that level on the S&P, that would be a great look for bulls going into the year end when we, generally speaking, have strong seasonal factors at play that could potentially push us higher in the markets. Again, links, resources down below to any of the tools that we like to use, including TradingView, including Lux Algo, and a lot of other stuff in the video description box down below. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you guys in a future video. Leave any tickers, any charts you want us to cover in future videos in the comment section, like always. We'll add them to our list, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.